This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms? How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Fabulous Publishing Day and Authoring Day here at Your Guide to Book Publishing. And I, I, I really thought it would be appropriate to address one of the things that a lot of people ask about, and it deals with overseas printing. Do I go overseas? Do I look at options? Is it safe? What's happening to the people who work in factories? What about children's books? And, and the like. So I thought it would make sense to really have an expert that deals with and knows overseas publishing and is affiliated with one of Author U's, uh, is one of Author U's premier partners. And I would just strongly recommend to all our listeners to check out the authoru.org site under premier partners as well as associate partners and all the details will be there. And with me, my guest for this hour will be Mike Daniels, who is the Great Plains Territory Manager for Four Color Print Group. And Mike is actually home-based out of Colorado, but travels all over the western United States and Midwest, speaking to authors and publishers and really helping them, uh, almost designing and giving them ideas on what they can do and some of the printing options and realms, both with covers as well as the interiors, which is really important. Mike has been in and out of the publishing, not out of it, but in the publishing business for several decades. He heads up a uh, the uh, Colorado Independent Publishers Education and Literacy Foundation. He wears his community hat as the Director of Public Affairs for the Colorado Civic Air Patrol. And he is the editor of their magazine, which is called Peaks and Plains. So if we get a chance, we'll talk about some of the things about what do they look for as an editor, including in a magazine. And he also wears the hat of author. He is the author of Living, Loving, and Loathing, Modern Rhymes and Limericks for the Romantically Inclined and Humorously Correct. And it was published by his own imprint, Goodnight Books. So he knows about independent publishing. He knows about self-publishing. He knows about traditional publishing. He really is a Mike of all trades. Mike, welcome to our program. Hello, Judith, and thank you for having me. Well, you are welcome. Listen, let's just jump right in because I actually was having a discussion with another one of my clients, book shepherding clients, about do we go overseas, um, do we keep it here, and there are certain components that you look at um, that helps bring about that that decision. And so why don't we first talk about, you're affiliated with Four Color Group. I know that the Four, four Color Print Group, um, I, I, I actually love them because they printed my husband's book, um, Have You Ever Held a Mountain, which they did beautiful color, beautiful cover design with us in the foil. And it just picked up another award, which was pretty exciting. But they, the quality is just impeccable. So tell us a little bit about Four Color. Four Color Print Group is the exclusive representative of three major book manufacturers around the world, one here in the U.S., one in South Korea, and one in Hong Kong, China. And what we do is we work with publishers, large and small, throughout North America, in the U.S. and Canada, in helping them successfully publish their book regardless of the capabilities because we have such flexibility among our three plants. In other words, depending upon the specifications of any job, not every book manufacturer is going to be able to manufacture that particular book. And having three plants to work with, we're able to meet the needs of almost any project that a publisher may have in mind. So is one of the, one of the plants would be more specific to a certain type of book 
um, than another? Absolutely. Uh, yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are, for example, children's books that might only be 32 pages or 24 pages. It's very hard to find a book manufacturer in the U.S. who can competitively price a children's book. Do it well and do it uh, as a, at a very competitive price to be competitive with the larger publishers that uh, smaller publishers are going to have to compete with. And therefore, the majority of those books we do at our plant in China. Okay. And I actually know because you have one of my clients you're printing right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly right. Christina right. Gradina, where we are so looking forward to get that little Tootsie in our hands. Um, when it, when it comes back. All right. So with that said, um, what would it, what would someone look for if there if there if there was an inkling of publishing overseas, um, and then and you know you I, I understand you do have the capability here within the states, but what would they look for? Why what would drive them to think of China or Korea or any place else? There are a number of factors that any author or publisher needs to keep in mind when deciding on where to manufacture their book. For example, how soon do they have to have the books? Do they already have pre-scheduled book signings and events that they have to have books in hand by a certain date? Um, if that's not the case, do they have more time to co accomplish the production? Or is there a budget they have to keep in mind? They want to, they want to to see their book look a particular way, but by doing it here in the U.S., the cost could be prohibitive, whereas if we were able to do it at our plant in China or Korea, the cost could come down considerably. So let's say a, a publisher, an author, has a project, and they have the time. They don't have to be at an event within three months or so from the time they're ready to send the book off to be produced. Uh, China would be an outstanding option because although it would take 12 weeks from the time we receive files to the time the books are delivered, the pricing would be considerably less than most manufacturers here in the U.S. or Canada for that matter. Again, depending on the specifications. If this is a color project, oversized trim size or a children's book, as I mentioned before, the pricing out of Asia can't be beat really cannot. But when it comes to standard one-color text, perfect brown books, which unfortunately has become somewhat of a commodity, um, pricing here in the U.S. would probably be better unless you're talking about higher quantities, in which case even one-color work can be less expensive if done in Asia at our plant in, in Korea or in China. And when you say it's less, what kind of percentages are we talking about? Again, depending on the quantities, because that's really what it comes down to in terms of, of the unit cost. But when you're pricing a title and you want to get a quote from a plant in Asia, whether that's with our company or any other company, you're really not going to be doing yourself a favor if you try quoting less than a 1,000 copies because you have to factor in the freight cost. And if you're doing a particular, again, type of a book like a black and white, perfect bound book, you would be better off doing it here in North America if your quantities are below 1,000 copies. Once you hit 2,000 copies, that you might say is the sweet spot, you will see a significant uh, benefit in unit cost by producing in Asia. All right, so we do have the sweet spot then, is it 2,000, not at 1,000? Correct. The sweet spot where you really see a substantial drop in unit cost is at 2,000 copies. At 1,000 copies, Depending again on the trim size and, and the specifications, if, if it's the type of a book that could be easily done here in North America, your costs are going to be very similar at the thousand quantity. But when you get to 2,000, you'll see quite a significant difference. However, if we're talking about a children's book or a, a title that is like a coffee table book that's oversized, and when I say oversized, Judith, I'm referring to books that are outside the standard trim sizes of eight and a half by 11, which is usually considered large format here in the United States or in Canada. Above eight and a half by 11, when we're talking about trims like a nine by 12 or a 12 by 12 or even larger, those types of books, it's very difficult to find a manufacturer in North America can, that can do those competitively, and we can do them very easily and at a great price at our plant in Asia. So, we, and of course, when you're talking about those larger sizes, that I mean, young kids' books just pop all over my, you know, my vision sphere here. 
because mm -hmm. that is the larger books. And so would you say, Mike, then, that most books that are published by, let's say, New York-type houses are printed overseas? I would say that the majority of uh, children's children. books and, and color books of any kind that are published by the larger trade houses are indeed right. published overseas, absolutely. All right, so then the, for people who are, who are focused on uh, I only want to do things in the U.S., mm -hmm. it, it may just not work, huh? It may not. Yeah. You need to please keep in mind that uh, I think you may know this, Judith. I, I have a, an undergraduate degree in Asian studies, and I, I studied Korean when I was in the military at the Defense Language Institute, and I never really thought that that would play a role later in my career, but it has indeed because I have a good understanding of the, the cultures and the politics. And what we need to understand when making decisions, business decisions, is whether or not the product, the quality, the service, and the business that we're going to be working with is reputable, is reliable, and will be there to support the product and support any needs we may have down the road. Our company, Four Color Print Group, does all of the pre-press here in the United States, which not only facilitates communication, but expedites turnaround on proof on all of the proofs and the proofing process. Most other Asian manufacturers are doing their own pre-press and, and um, proofing out of their plant in Asia, which can in some cases be a hassle for, for publishers when it comes to communication and getting answers back and forth. So we're able to, to really take a big uh, nut out of an uh, obstacle, if you will, uh, as to why some people don't like to work overseas. But also, too, our plant in, in China, for example, is an FSC certified plant. That's Forest Stewardship Council. And there are a lot of people in this country who are trying to be more environmentally friendly and, and produce books that are environmentally friendly and that adhere to the SIPSIA, the Consumer Safety Protection Information Act guidelines. And our plant does all of that. Uh, it's state of the art. And we have 100% um, reliability when it comes to being responsible for, for our products. We stand behind everything that is produced at our plants in Asia. And sometimes that is it's a stumbling block or an obstacle for some people to do business overseas. Yeah, it is. It's a huge block. So when we come back, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break here. But when we come back, I'd like to really focus on some of those things, so what, what people are the fear factors and what they can get by that. So be right back. This is Judith Riles. My guest this session is Mike Daniels. We're talking about printing overseas. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. Questions? Call 866 This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with if you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Change the way you publish online. WaveCloud is a new form for authors to manage all their books' information in one place from start to finish, including pricing and listing summary. To learn more or sign up for email updates, visit wavecloud.com. Every picture tells a story. 
And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me, my guest is Mike Daniels, and he is with Four Color Print Group. And not only does Mike um, work with Four Color, has has uh, three different plants, one in the United States as well as China and Korea. And and I should say that Mike speaks fluent Korean, and I remember when I had a book that had Korean rights, and I brought it to him, and I showed him the book, and I said, so is this my book? <laughs> Do you remember that, Mike? I do remember that book when you had sold your rights, you know, in translation. And I, I have to correct you. I wouldn't say I speak fluent Korean, but I certainly speak enough, write enough, and read enough to know what's what's being said. Uh, having been a graduate of the Defense Language Institute and learning the language while I was there, and as I mentioned earlier, um, you never know how down the road that might assist you in what you're doing in life. But okay, speaking absolutely. of South Korea, <laughs> if hey, if you yeah. can read it. And you can write it, and you can say it. That that for me, who is language challenged, that sounds like it's fluent to me. But with that, <laughs> said, let's Fair enough. To the, first of all, I want to say that if, for people who are listening live, if you have any questions, you can call in at eight six six four zero four. 6519. That's 866 404 6519. We're talking about printing overseas. My guest is Mike Daniels with Four Color Print Group. And we were talking about a couple of things. One is that there's a lot of authors who are spooked about printing overseas um, because of the quality of the print or the possibility of having contaminants in there that might um, uh, flow off and, and not be allowed even in the U.S. So, Mike, why don't you come back and and readdress that. And what are some of the changes in the law? I know that there was a deferral. What's going on with that? What Judith is referring to is the Consumer Safety Protection Information Act, otherwise known as SIPSIA, that Congress was going back and forth on and ruling what products have to abide by the SIPSIA guidelines and to whom um, they are really trying to, pr- to protect through those guidelines. And what it's come down to at this point is uh, the, the, the rule states that if a product is to be used by a child 12 years or under, that the product should carry the SIPSIA disclaimer from the manufacturer stating that they abide by all of the the testing and um, guidelines that have been set forth as to production for for any product that a child might have their hands on. And and the problem is, as there many people may know, many of, of your listeners may know, there have been cases where 
products manufactured in China, and I'm not just referring to books, it can be toys or, or other items, contained lead in the paint, which of course can be poisonous and is poisonous. And so this is just another way to protect citizens in the U.S. from being um, involved with, in some way, shape, or form, a product that might contain lead. And although almost all ink that is used here in the U.S. and overseas are, is soy-based now, there are still some metallic inks that are used. And um, it's important that the manufacturer has a statement that they have, in fact, done the, the testing that is required to, to prove, uh, without a doubt, that the inks and materials that they're using do not contain lead and other substrates. Which, which is actually a good idea. I, I think that's mm -hmm. a good idea. All right, well, right. Let's, let's hop over to some of the, um, uh, some of the advantages as well as the, uh, the, maybe the disadvantages of going overseas. I mean, you did talk about time. You did talk about pricing a little bit. And we now know that the sweet spot is at 2000 So l let me hop over to, back to time. So what kind of time frame? Let's say I have my book done, and I suspect, is there, will there be a difference between a color book versus a, maybe a black and white print? I mean, it's, it's color. Overseas doesn't mean you just do color, correct? Oh, absolutely not. As I was stating before, we can do, and I can give you a scenario, in fact, we perfect. can do beautiful work of uh, black and white, perfect bound books that you can easily have produced here in North America, and we can do them for less, when again, you're at quantities of 2,000 or above. But in terms of the time factor, you're not really going to save any time as to, uh, in terms of whether you're printing black and white or color. The turnaround time, the actual manufacturing, is still only about four weeks. What comes into play is, of course, the, the shipping boat. and the freight. <laughs> yeah, the boat. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And, and, and when the old expression of it's on, it's on a boat from China, it does take a long time to get from, from China, from the port in China, to the ports here in the U.S. And to expedite books, let's say one of, um, one of the publishers has an event that is scheduled coming up sooner than they can get the bulk shipment delivered, we can always airship a carton or two so that they can, in fact, get their books before a 12-week turnaround time. In some cases, they can get books as quickly as, as six weeks um, or, or five weeks because as soon as the books are actually produced, we can airship them. It's a matter of the bulk shipment that takes the long time. Mm -hmm. And, of course, an air shipment isn't, isn't cheap. You know, it can be a hundred dollars to ship a box of books. Yikes! Um, yeah. Well, it depends on how much we save. Then it, you know. Right, and it depends upon how badly you need them for a particular an event. So, mm -hmm. um, it's just an option to keep in mind. So the turnaround time, regardless of whether it's black and white or color, is going to be the same, whether we produce at the plant in China, which is twelve weeks. Or if we produce at the plant in Korea, which I haven't mentioned yet, the turnaround time is reduced by four weeks. It's an eight-week turnaround time out of Korea, again, just based on geography. And here in the U.S., basic turnaround time from our plant or most other plants is about four weeks. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when, when thinking about when you need the books and when the books are actually ready files-wise to go to press. And Mike, you talk to about the, co the cost factor, and, and again, this is my experience, which I've had experience with your company, that, that um, and, and actually it was less than 12 weeks, so, mm -hmm. um, and we had, a, we had a full color throughout the book, um, right. a coffee table it's type better, book. It's a, Judith, it's always better to be conservative in timing, as you know. And, and no question. Always, you know, over, uh, under promise and over deliver is always a good motto, and when yeah. it comes to delivery out of our plants, I don't want people expecting books in 10 weeks when, in fact, they may not arrive for 12. So it's always better to go on the long side. All right. So let's say that you do have time. Time's not an issue for you. You can be a little bit relaxed here. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about some of the cost savings. So I'm just going to tell our listeners what I, what our cost saving was on, on what we had. We looked at a book that we had roughly an 86-page four-color book that was around – um, I think it was um, six by seven in its size. So it's a small, a small book, gift book. Um, it had foil printing on it. It was very ornate. It had a volume cover. It was a hardback book.
book. And it also had printing on the case bound as well with the bill that went over it. Um, what we had was uh, the, the cost comparisons that we went to. We started in the U- U.S. and it came in at uh, for my our breaks. For a couple of thousand, that sweet spot, Mike, the mm-hmm. couple of thousand was something like six dollars and some six dollars and seventy cents per book, versus when we went overseas, it dropped to two dollars and sixty five or fifty six or something like that cents per book. It was right. a huge, huge difference. Huge. Correct. And, and there's something to keep in mind with. Judith's book, Judith, uh, if I'm not mistaken, your book also had, or I should say John's book, mm-hmm. had a, a ribbon marker in it. Did it not? Oh, yes. It oh, a, yeah. And, I, and I'll tell people what that cost, too. When we mm-hmm. were quoted in North America, we were looking at 95 cents per ribbon marker, and in China it was a nickel. Right. And that is substantial. It's huge. That is it was, major. It was huge. It was huge. Yes. Absolutely. And so there are certain types, again, that goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of our conversation. The specifications of a given job can help to determine where to produce that job and where the best pricing will be. And so that's where a book manufacturer's representative such as myself can save you a lot of time in helping to, shall we say, diagnose your specifications, taking a look at them and determining very quickly from a trained trained individual who knows what those specifications mean in in the big scheme of things as to where best to produce them and where the costs are going to come into play. Mm-hmm. And and you know, for our listeners, Mike brings up a really important point that when you have the opportunity to interact with someone like Mike or with, really with any of our other sponsors um, that we have, whether you know Color House Graphics or Thompson Shore um, or and in any of our printers uh, that we work with, that they're all seasoned individuals like Mike is and that they really have been around the print business and can really look at a book and be an assistant to you and making some really good recommendations that maybe you hadn't even thought of. Is that right, Mike? Absolutely, Judith. It will save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars by working with someone who knows the business and knows what is important to a project and what doesn't really matter because you may have in your mind that you want it to be on a particular type of paper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so when we come back, we're going to be talking about what kind of paper and maybe the alternative, which is what his company did for me when we went to print. I'm Judith Riles. You're listening to Your Guide to Book Publishing. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discounts on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? TuVets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products, as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. Contact our friendly, human, account representatives. We recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call one 800 894-8977.
When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On Tuesday, I was in a, a celebration event um, for one of my book shepherding clients who uh, had the opportunity to work with several of the other people that we love to work with and uh, that had done design who is going to be have a few things to share with us, a couple of tips. And Nick Zellinger was involved in creating a book cover. And the name of the book, which isn't even available in the stores, it's not on Amazon, we just did a pre-celebration party, was called The Business of Wanting More. And that when you look at it and the cover that Nick created and the elegancy of the printing and the cover and the design interior and bringing it over together. And one of the things I had promised the author, Brian Gast, was that when we were done, he would have a book he would never regret. And that's what he said to me when I went and just chatted with him in the kitchen. He said, you promised me. And you delivered, and Nick Zellinger designed the cover, which was part of the delivering of Never Regretting It. Hi, Nick. How are you? Fine, Judith. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. So what hot tip do you have for us in the graphics cover interior design land? Well, um, I'm, as, I'm, as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm looking at my, my Pantone Selective Swatch book, and it's older than yours. I think mine's on papyrus. <laughs> it's, it's like, I think the date says 1991, so I mean, it's... Oh, maybe I should give you mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's a collector's item. But uh, I think you know we we every once in a while we talk about uh, you know little tips on covers covers and stuff. But I think uh, probably uh, you know I mean the idea of cover design when we're judging it, it's it's kind of sub- subjective. But there is still uh, there's open it's open for debate about what what are the right elements. But we're almost certain there are some things that are wrong right off the bat. When somebody's considering some design, and then some of the two two largest problems, biggest problems that we have is is a, a lack of impact uh, and clutter, and both of those have to do with uh, both of those have to do with uh, having the cover unfocused. In other words, not having your either not having the proper title. If you've got a six, seven, eight word, nine word title, I think the author needs to rethink that and get you know truncate that title into something a little tighter, and then. Uh, just the clutter of a of a cover, uh, you know, a, a newbie and a first time author may be very uh, obsessed with having too many elements of of his story on the cover, and uh, you know, the impact is more important than than the elements. So you need to have a proper balance of the, your title and and color comes into play, and just the the balance of all those elements, so that at first glance, and then when you look away at second glance, you're still getting the same message and the same intent that uh, you know your your book wants wants to have. 
And that, that makes, makes a huge, yeah, that makes a huge difference. And I think that even though Brian, let's talk about Brian's yeah. book, the the business of wanting more. Um, although you know it's it's a big title, but the way you put it together, it still had a huge pop. Yeah, um, and it was. Uh, we tried to. I mean, it's a book about leadership and about business, and 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 we wanted to give it a successful, refined quality without being garishly overboard. So the type is rather traditional. But it builds, in other words, we've got just three lines of type where the word more is the largest. So it kind of ascends to the, to the final word of the title. And, uh, so we kept that, uh, at first glance, it's very simple, but it, but it's very effective because it just, it just kind of just balloons up to the, uh, to the, you know, the word. And then we mm-hmm. have a, you know, you had a good subtitle and a good balance. So the balance of the whole piece is really nice. And, and it's, uh, it comes across as subtle. But it also comes across as very refined and elegant, and I think that's the direction he he really was hoping to go for something mm-hmm. that had mm-hmm. very much quality to it. Right, and I think, and we'll, we'll close off here. But the other one of the other covers that I think you designed for us that really popped was the adrenal fatigue syndrome, where you had oh, yeah. that spectacular mango orange spiral that came into play. And I remember you saying to me, "How did you talk him into this?" Well, I thought it might be a little bit overboard for a doc, a med- uh, you know, a medical practitioner, but actually, it's really good. I mean, it's just you know, taking one element and using that and not having so much so that your eye doesn't jot around over the you know all over the cover trying to find out what the title is and what it's about so it's all about balance i think too yeah and as you know he loves it all right thanks Wonderful. good information Thank and you. um for people who want to get a hold of nick it's at it's at n z is in zebra graphics at comcast.net or you can go to nzgraphics.com and see a portfolio of his work and make sure you tell them that you heard him through your guide to book publishing. All right, Nick, thanks. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, Mike, um, paper. We're into paper. And, and and you you kind of had you left us dangling, hanging, and a lot of people do not realize that there's differences between some North American papers and the Asian papers. So why don't you lead us down that path? I will be happy to. Um, although Nick brought up papyrus, we are beyond papyrus <laughs> at this point. Whether well, <laughs> whether it's produced here in the U.S. or in Asia, but what people need to understand is that there is a difference in how paper is weighed and the the nomenclature, if you will, for paper in Asia versus here in the U.S. Very quickly and in very easy layman terms, let's say someone was planning to do a children's book on 100-pound weight paper, on white paper. Mm -hmm. In Asia... If we did that, we wanted to use that same paper in Korea, the, the terminology would be 120, I'm sorry, 150 GSM is equal to 100 pounds here. GSM stands, stands for grams per square meter, and that's how they weigh the paper in Asia versus here in pounds. So we have a nice handy reference chart that we give to clients that, has a, that basically shows the conversions uh, across the board of the different papers that are available, and what's 100 pounds equals 150 GSM. In China, that same 100 pounds would be 157 GSM, which roughly comes out to about 105 pounds. So actually, by producing the book at our plant in China, the paper is a little bit heavier. It's a little bit heavier weight paper than just a standard 100 pound. And that goes true for, holds true for an 80 pound paper, in the U.S., uh, in Korea, that's a 120 GSM, and in China, it's a 128 GSM, which is about 85 pounds. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind when requesting a quote. You may get a quote back from an Asian manufacturer where the paper is in grams per square meter, GSM, versus pounds. And, of course, coated paper is the preferred paper to use for, for quality color printing, as mm-hmm. opposed to uncoated paper. Mm-hmm. And again, let's try to think of paper um, in layman's terms. Let's think of paper towels. Everybody knows about paper towel. And, and various manufacturers talk about how absorbent they are. Well, uncoated paper is going to absorb that drop of ink much more so than coated paper. And what that translates to when printing a book 
is if the drop of ink stands up and isn't absorbed on the sheet of paper, it's going to be brighter. The reproduction quality is going to be more brilliant than if it's absorbed and muted in the paper. So try to put your mind around the idea of a drop of water, like I said, on a, a paper towel, how quickly it gets absorbed. If you put that same drop of water on wax paper, that drop will stand up. And that's the same idea on coated paper so that the, the drops and the dots of ink are, are more brilliant, they're, they're more eye-catching, they're less muted. Mm -hmm. You'll find that on uncoated paper, you can certainly print color text, color images on uncoated paper, but they just won't be as sharp. The image just won't be as sharp to the eye. Well, let me ask you this, Very, I know we've got two minutes before our next break, but let me ask you this, that um, if you have um, a, a book, like a workbook, um, and it does have some color in it, what it might be, if, if it's a workbook and they're going to they're gonna have to, or maybe they shouldn't have color, I don't know, but that they uh, have to write in it, it's designed for that, don't you run into trouble with a coated paper? You can, but it's interesting you should bring that up because I just delivered a workbook that uh -huh. was printed for color. Uh -huh. And I sat down with the client and I had her write with a pencil and with an, a ballpoint pen on an uncoated paper and uncoated uh -huh. paper. Uh -huh. And she was able to write on both of them. Uh, where you run into problems is when you use a gel ink or yeah. a felt tip pen on coated oh. paper. Yep. That's really where you're going to get the ink smudging and so forth. Well, if you, you you know if you use that gel or the or the you now you're back to your paper towel example right, because right. it'll absorb it and then smear on out or it's going to smear on top. I mean, I've had that problem before. <laughs> and also too with pencil on coated paper, it doesn't write as easily. So if you if you know what you utensil, if you will, that the individual is going to write with, that's great. But most times you don't, and, and you're correct in saying that uncoated paper is, in fact, easier to write on. Mm -hmm. uh, so if the, image, if the image isn't critical in terms of the production quality, then you, you might be better off going with an uncoated paper for a work, workbook, whether it's printing color or not. Right. However, right. it's so when he comes back, he'll finish up on that, and then I want Mike to talk about wood-free paper. And what is it, and does it make sense? This is Judith Bryles. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Writing and reading are moving to the cloud. WaveCloud represents a whole new community for writers and readers to connect, communicate, evaluate, and share. Writers hone their craft and build their business. Readers build their favorites. Sign up for updates at wavecloud.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory, management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, we're just really getting into all these different variations from Asian printing versus North American printing. There's cost differences, certainly, and I asked Mike to, if you wanted to go in a little bit more so people could get an idea if your quote here comes in for, he says the sweet spot is 2000 but there may be some differences at 1000 And this is, this is probably where you would be looking at offset printing versus digital printing and moving in that area. But I think Mike can address that. I've asked him to also get, give us a little bit insight on what wood-free paper is and when does it make sense. Um, and also, I wanted him to really get into um, what can be done overseas in book printing as well as spin-off related printing that just doesn't work so well in North America. So, Mike, I threw a bunch at you. Go to it. Okay, well, let me first tackle the, the wood-free. What does wood-free mean? Wood-free is basically the term used in Asia for uncoated. So when you get a quote for end sheets, for example, or for a, a book that doesn't require coated paper, such as black and white text throughout, they're going to be quoting it as wood-free. That's the term they use. That's all it is, okay. is uncoated paper. All right, and, there you go. And as far as what to look for on a quote, let me touch on that real quickly. One of the things when you're quoting in, in Asia that you don't deal with here in the U.S. is is U.S. customs and cl customs clearance. And, of course, we talked earlier about the time it takes to clear customs and the overall delivery time is longer. But our pricing, uh, through Four Color Print Group anyway, I, I can't speak for other Asian manufacturers, but we include that, that cost to you. So when you see the price, it includes everything you're going to need to spend for having that book produced and delivered to you at the, the point of delivery where you want it delivered. When you give us the location of where you want it delivered with a zip code, the pricing you get back on your quote will include the U.S. Customs Clearance and Warehouse Delivery. And if you needed a liftgate truck delivery, for example, that would be the only additional cost that there might be of about $100 or $150, depending upon where you're located. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, the quotes are going to be very similar to what you would get here in the U.S. from a manufacturer in the U.S. or Canada. Again, the only difference being the terminology for the types of paper being in grams per square meter, um, whether it says wood-free or, or not. Most manufacturers have proprietary names, but, but if you want a gloss paper or a matte paper, again, those terms are going to be used. And as far as what you were asking in regards to what can be done in Asia that maybe can't be done so well here in the U.S. and very competitively priced um, versus what would be done here in the U.S. are uh, books like board books for children that you don't necessarily think of, but for really young children that you're still um, thinking of, of a board book, for example. I've quoted one just recently with someone where they want not only it to be a board book, but they want there to be windows that you can lift up and look mm -hmm. inside. Uh, that's, that die cutting is what that's called, can be very costly if done page by page, 
as was quoted for this particular board book, and yet it can be done very cost-effectively at our plant in Asia. So that's just one example. Another example is a product called a Flexi Case that you just don't see here in the U.S. in terms of its manufacturing, and it's really a hybrid between a soft cover and a hard cover book. And a lot of university presses, um, such as uh, a book that I, I carry around as an example, Texas A&M University Press, uh, other university presses, a lot of them always like to do a split run, a split bind, where you might do, uh, say, a thousand hardcover books and 2,000 softcover books at the same time. You save money that way because your printing the text is the same. The only thing that changes is the bind. When you do the flexi case cover, which as I mentioned is like a hybrid, it's, it's, it's more rigid, it's harder than a soft cover, it's harder than a 12 point soft cover, but it's, it's more rigid and softer than a board book, a hardcover case book. And it can be a little bit less in, in terms of cost, and you can incorporate things like a dust jacket flap or end sheets or head and, and tail bands, and it can be sewn just like you might expect in a hardcover book, but yet this is more of a, a flexible book, uh, and it's called a flexi case. And that's something that just isn't done here in North America. And uh, is this, so, Mike, can I ask you for doing creating the flexi case, and I actually have an interest in this really closely here for a client of mine I'm working with right now. So is a flexi case, is it got this like 12 week or is it an eight week trigger around? Which country are we doing this out of? We would be doing it most effectively at our plant in Hong Kong in China. And that plant okay. is ever, mm-hmm, that's our plant that we are the exclusive North American representatives for. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. All right. I, I, I interrupted you. <laughs> that's all right. As I was saying in regards to delivery, the bulk shipment is what's going to take the 12 week turnaround time, and that's a conservative estimate. But if books were needed, you're always going to receive your advance copies. They're going to be sent to you via courier overnight before the bulk shipment can be approved and shipped by boat. So you'll be getting those advanced shipments in as little as, as maybe five, six weeks from the time that the book goes to press. It's just the overall delivery of the finished product that can take up to 12 weeks. Uh, also, one of the things that we want to talk about is uh, my tablet books and, and e-books when publishers now are printing their books, they need to keep in mind that you're going to literally be selling yourself short and leaving money on the table if you don't also convert that book to an ebook at the same time that you're going to press. It's really very inexpensive, relatively speaking, to convert a book as we do, uh, even a color book, um, to an ebook so that you have it to use as a, a marketing. Uh, purpose in addition to a sales product. When you have the opportunity to travel around the country and you have your iPad with you, for example, you don't necessarily want to carry a whole lot of uh, books with you, but an iPad can contain a library of dozens of books and you'd be able to showcase various books that you as a publisher or as an author have published very nicely, I might add, and then say, and by the way, not only is this available as an ebook for X number of dollars, but if you buy an ebook, we'll sell you the printed book at 60% off. Mm-hmm. Or, or vice versa, buy the printed book at the full price and get the ebook for free. There's various ways you can do that, and it gives your book more exposure. It gives your book more presence because your book is in more places, more locations. And through My Tablet Books, when we use um, uh, My Tablet Books, for distribution and sales of a publisher's ebook, that is basically set up for them at no cost. It's included in the conversion price, and it allows them to have the ability to sell their book directly from their website or their Facebook page and gain an 80% return on the sale, whereas when you go to, say, Amazon or Apple or other ebook distributors, you'll be lucky if you get 70% of the retail price that you charge. Oh, lost him. Yep. So that's something certainly to keep in mind. Uh, when you're independently publishing, one of the, the whole goals is to have more control over the entire process, including your sales. And as I say, if you're not also converting your book to an ebook while you're printing the book, um, you're selling yourself short, literally. You're selling your sales short. 
So when you're saying that when you have a client that you're working with in the printing side that you automatically include the My Tablet conversion for them, is that what you said? When, when we send a customer a printed quote, at the bottom mm-hmm. of the quote, we show them what the cost would be to convert that same book to an e-book at the same time that they're going to press with their printed book. And as I shared, that price includes setting them up for sales and distribution right from the get-go, so they would immediately be able to sell books even before uh, they set up a contract with Amazon or Barnes & Noble or anyone. They'd be able to sell e-books right from their own website or Facebook page. So so would they get the then whatever the, the file is, that if they decide to put it on Nook or iPad or uh, um, um, Amazon, that they correct. would have the files just to upload directly to? That's correct. The more irons okay. in the fire, the better. And that's exactly what they can do. When we create that file, whether it's an EPUB format or Mobi format, and it's important uh-huh. for everyone to know, that the EPUB format is what the majority of e-readers are using now. The iPads, the, the Barnes & Noble Nooks, the Samsung tablets, all of those are using EPUB format. About the only one that's using Mobi format is Amazon's Kindle. And we will convert to both formats if a publisher would like us to, so it's available in, to that's almost a good idea. Yeah. But, uh, but EPUB is the way to go now. Well, it, it, it's, uh, you, you just want it all out there. The bottom line is you do all, it's, it's, it's the menu in the Italian restaurant. It's spaghetti or lasagna or eggplant or fill in your blank, satisfy everybody, and, and you all be a happy camper with, right. with and, that. All right. Like I said, we'll get, it, we'll get it uploaded to Amazon and to, to Apple and, and Barnes and & Noble, wherever you create agreements, uh, we'll be more than happy to upload the files. And what's important to know is you own that file. If you go directly to Amazon and Amazon says, oh, we'll be happy to convert your PDF file for you to a book. Yeah. It's theirs. You know, you have no control over it. Yeah, and people just don't realize that. And with that, we're going to close off here. We want to thank Mike Daniels. He is the Great Plains, it's a lot of area, territory manager for Four Color Print Group, um, which really specializes in overseas printing, both Asia, Korean, and they have offices here. So it's very competitive and looking at, but there's a lot of information. Be smart. Your printing is always an expensive part, and people kind of get spooked. But it, it's about in the business of publishing is of putting together a game plan so you market books that you will not have a garage full of them, that you're really going to make a living at that. Thanks so much, Mike, for being with us. For having me. All right. This is Judith Bryles. We'll be back with you next week. you for being a part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles